A great way to add some realism to your scene is by adding a distant fog. It can be a real fog or a simple aerial perspective that is useful to give some depth. Okay, but how can we do it? We have three ways to do this. The first way is by adding a volumetric fog to this simple environment. So, let's add a cube and scale it in order to fill the entire scene. You can set its visibility to wire in order to see the objects below. Now, in the shader panel, add a volume shader Also, add a sky texture to the background in order to have a good illumination. Add a camera and frame the scene as you prefer. Then, set cycles as rendering engine and click on the rendered preview button. There is a problem. The cube is completely solid. That's because we have to lower the density of the volume, for example 0.001. Okay, now it's better. You can clearly see the difference by turning on and off the visibility of the fog. We can also add some variety to the fog by adding a noise texture as the density input. In order to see the noise, you have to press Ctrl or Command and Shift and then click on the noise texture. Oh, this is a Node Wrangler add-on shortcut. Also, add a color ramp node in order to lower the density of the fog. You have to click on the white color and choose a dark gray shade. For example, something as low as 0.001. The problem with this method is that it takes long time to compute. It is also very noisy and you have to increase a lot the samples to get good results. So, let's take a look at the second method. This time we have to add multiple planes to the scene as if they were many clouds. First of all, add a single plane and create a new material. Add a noise texture and plug the factor value both to the color and alpha input. The dark area will be transparent now we have to create a mask in order to have a smooth transition to the borders. Add a gradient texture and set it as spherical. Then add a texture setup. Again, note Wrangler thank you and set the texture coordinate as object. We want to use this as mask so that the black area will be transparent. So we have to add a mix node. Set the color 1 to black and connect the noise texture as color 2. Finally, add the gradient texture as factor. Basically, we have added a transparent border to the texture. Remember, where the texture is black, the final material will be transparent. Okay, now we have something like a little cloud. All you have to do is to duplicate this plane many times. This will give the illusion of a real fog, but with a fraction of noise and computation time than before. The last method is the simplest one, and everything is done in the compositing step. First of all, open the View Layers tab and turn on the mist pass. Then move to the camera panel and activate the mist in the viewport display options. Now click on the material preview button and select the mist pass. Then you can adjust the fog depth in the world settings and have a preview of the fog pass. Finally, render the scene but where is the fog? You can't see it as it is stored as a render pass, so we have to open the compositing view. Select the Use Nodes checkbox and add a viewer node. Now add a mix node and connect the mist pass to the factor input. Basically, you are mixing the original image with a flat color, in this case white, with a mask generated from the mist pass. 
The result is as we saw before in the layout panel. However, you can change the depth of the fog. Also, if you don't modify the values in the world settings, all you have to do is to add a map value node to the mist pass. Select the minimum and maximum checkbox and slightly change the related values. You can also plug the mist pass into the second image input of the mix node in order to increase the contrast. Very good. Now you can add some depth to your scene and you can choose the right method for you. Remember to subscribe to the channel to stay updated with upcoming videos.